Hi everyone, thanks for joining us here today in the studio. Welcome. Um, have a nice little demo plan for you and sharing a few things that I've been doing in the studio. And I guess I'll start with that. Um, well, first of all, it's a lovely day here in Portland, um, but we are thinking of uh, all our friends and, and neighbors in Hawaii and wishing for their safe, um, their safety and all the best for them. So um, with that, uh, I'm just going to show you a couple things that I've been doing. I've been playing around with some mixed media abstracts in the studio. Some of you might know that I've been doing some really large scale abstracts in acrylic and just kind of um, really playing with those and expanding on the, um, the color palettes and, and the mark making vocabulary that I'm using in them. I've been doing some smaller studies and those are really fun to do. I have a, a, about eight or 10 going all at once, which is a really fun way to work. Um, I just kind of get every, gather everything from my studio, kind of everything the kit in the kitchen sink and just start playing around. So without further ado, I'll share a few of those. And I'll just go to the, let's just go to the tabletop for those. So here they are. So these um, are uh, acrylic pastel, uh, some graphite, a little bit of Prismacolor, lots of different tools to create these, um, including brushes, brayers, scrapers, you name it, I'm trying to use it. <laughs> um, subtracting media as well as adding media. You know, so really, really, really fun. Lots of layers. Just really enjoying this mode of working. So there's a couple different ones. So really just exploring different color palettes and um, different, the hierarchy of the, the, the colors and the, the, the shapes. So they're really, really kind of neat. And this last one, this last one's nice and bright and really, really, really fun. So that's one of the things that I've been doing around here. And I've got, I think I've got about six or eight more set up um, just like this in the other studio. And I'll be working on those later this afternoon. Okay, and a couple announcements before we get going on the demo today. Um, we, uh, we're in the middle of our year, well, not in the middle, we, was the end of our year five sale of monthly pastel painting lessons online, which has some amazing new features. Uh, one that's really getting a lot of buzz and people are really excited about is ArtSpeak. We have guest artist interviews and demos every month now. We just released um, uh, Elaine Ordman. We have um, Mike Beeman. Who else do we have? We have Lynn Aseltla. Corey Pitkin's going to be doing one. I just got done talking to Don Emerson and she did a beautiful demo for us. Who else do we have? Colette Odia Smith did a fabulous demo and really interesting talking to her. She's so charming. So we have some of the real luminaries of the pastel world that are joining us for demos and interviews. So it's really been just so wonderful and rich to talk to those guys. And we also have a new feature called Mastery Mindset where we're really be digging into the idea uh, that learning art is not a linear process. It's, it's a spiral learning process and talking about that. We also have new learning pathways that will help you navigate our pretty darn vast library. Now there's over 250 videos, hundreds and hundreds of hours of video. So it's pretty epic and we've kept the price the same. Uh, this year, I really want to make uh, our platform really affordable and available to as many people as want to be engaged in this amazing, lovely world of pastels. So we have extended the sale until August, I'm sorry, September 9th. And so you'll find um, the, the coupon codes um, in the um, in the in the um, description and also we'll we'll put that in the chat as well today so 
with um, all of that in mind, I'm going to do a demo for you today, a little bit different, in that I'm going to be using a reference photo. It's an old school uh, photo, so it's it's an actual it's an actual photo. Here we could we could go to the t tabletop. So it's uh, a very old photo. It's not that you know exciting, right? No, it's one of those and. I kind of like using photographs that are like this because there's always um, a need for for me in there, some some creativity. I have to I have to push myself to find um, the 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 beauty in it, what makes it unique, what makes it worthy, and um, and kind of dig it out. So. One of the ways that I do that is I'll I'll gather up photographs that are like this. Look at this one. This one's really, it's really, a couple of these are really rough. They're old. And they've been sitting around a long time. When something's been sitting around a long time, um, it's also telling me something about it, that there's something there that keeps me, keeps it in my stack. Keeps it in the to-do list, on the to-do list, I should say. So um, just kind of, it's going to be fun to kind of go back to this one today and see what we could get. Now, I also think that this, this idea of using a photograph that's maybe not as um, uh, uh, typically something that you might paint or, or seems right off the bat or obviously beautiful. Um, me having to push myself to it, uh, to, to find that composition in it, is going to uh, require me to um, play with the composition and also move away from the photograph a bit. I, if I paint something, from start to finish, you know, and I still do this some days. You know, come in here Hi, in the I'm studio Marla and I'll pick up a really beautiful photograph and I'll paint it and at the end it looks just like it. Well, that's kind of not <laughs> the point for me. I want more than that. I don't want to be married or tied to my photo reference. I want to be making a painting. So doing something, making maybe something that's um, un, that's sort of usual, make it unusual, make it beautiful. And that's the exciting thing for me. Um, just painting something that's like obviously right in front of me, that's, it, it, it no longer holds the same interest as it might have when I first began painting. Uh, all right, so let's take a look at the tabletop. Yeah, that's, that's uh, on the on the screen there. That, those are some thumbnails. Um, so, really quick, um, mm -hmm. can you remind everyone, just get, jumping back before mm -hmm. we forget, um, what kind of paper did you use for the abstracts? Oh, sure. Yes. Um, this is a multimedia paper. Um, it's just a, um, it's a heavy, heavy duty sort of bond like paper, but it will accept it's, there's lots of stuff on here. There's ink, there's paint, there's you know, um, scraping and all, all kinds of stuff. But it's, you could see it's, it's pretty sturdy paper, but it is paper, so, yeah. Um, any other, any more than that? Okay, cool. So, uh, taking a, a reference photo such as the one that we're gonna use today, uh, and coming up with a, a uh, several variations for compositions based on it, um, I think is a really uh, great way to start moving away from the reference photo a, a bit. You're still, you're still using it, but as I said in, my, in, the, in the video thumbnail for today's lesson, it's not using you. And I like to think that way about a reference photo. Making just a, let the photo be a suggestion, not let it be um, the, the, completely the driving force behind your painting. So what I'm going to do today before I start painting is I'm going to do a few little thumbnails. Now this one's pretty close to this. I may have done that a while back. 
So I'm going to start there. I'm going to use that one in the center that I that I had on the um, description. And we're just going to do a couple of different, I like squares, so I think I'm going to end up with the square, but maybe I'll change my mind. I'm going to come up. And so I'm going to take, now the other thing I think about is, uh, look, at the, look at this. I naturally gravitate towards my paintings being more about the earth than the sky. So look what I did. I made more ground plane than sky, even though the photograph doesn't really imply that. But we'll try one that's maybe more about the sky also. So there are these four ground little bushes. There's come kind of some stepping. There's a suggestion of a gradation here. And I've got this, this little, this, the, the distant mountain kind of uh, implies or it suggests this little angle here. And then the clouds also, this countering angle here. So those are good, good ideas. The lighting is very uh, soft. And I like that, but there's also this cool red in there. That's kind of why I picked the, the paper that I did. So let's try it another, let's try another version and see if we like it. So this time let's make the sky more. And and that, yeah, that might be cool to do. Oh, we're having a few comments about uh, your crepe myrtle. Some people oh, my crepe myrtle, isn't it? It's my Muppet tree. <laughs> it's a total funny guy, right, this time of year. It, always, it reminds me of the Muppets. It's so popping. And that those blue blossoms are like these little fuzzy, little funny things. They're, it's such a funny tree. And it's, boy, has it grown. I planted it, uh, I think, two years ago. It's really, it's going to be a shade tree eventually. Okay, so then here, so I've got this angle here. Maybe we we'll go like this with the clouds. Well, it's just to see it. Okay, I'm still gravitating towards the top one. Okay, um, and I want to get the intervals between these little bushes so that it's interesting and not even. Got a little bit of a land mass there. All right, let's try one more. Let's try one other composition. How about a more of a this kind of proportion? Would that be interesting to me? And I always want to, you know, I want to be excited while I'm painting. So I'm going to try to So in my lessons, I, I do talk about how to best move away from a traditional use of a reference photo. There are a lot of ways of doing it. There's a lot of ways of approaching. Now that's pretty exciting too. Um, all three, I think, could be worthy ideas. Uh, I'm going to do one, I'm going to go one, one little step further. I'm going to get some alcohol just so I can kind of see these a little bit, a little bit more interesting way. So this is just 70% uh, isopropyl alcohol and a bristle brush. 
And what this will do is it'll just kind of group the values a little bit. Oh, this, oh, this brush is, what's going on with this brush? Yeah, it's okay. Just kind of harmonize those values a little. It's nice. And I can also get an idea of like maybe even some texture and some edges in here by doing this. Ooh, I like, I, I'm sorry, I like this one. And even then I can go in there and play with these. These kind of little thumbnail-y things I like to keep. I'll, I'll cut this off and I'll tip this into a sketchbook. Um, I like these so much right now that I'm going to do something else to them too. Um, I'm going to come in and I'm going to add a little bit of this. Maybe you should. Um, Thumbnails just make me paint, happy. Well, we paint the uh, crepe myrtle at some point. I think it's uh, it's really popular <laughs> in the chat right now. Is it? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, they don't they don't grow very well in cold climates. I, I I've seen them in the south, like North Carolina and D.C. area, but uh -huh. I I don't think they grow in like the northeast. Mine area. is that bright red. They 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 have in all different colors, right? They're more pink and more. Okay, that's super fun. All right, so now it's time to decide. I'm still gravitating towards this top one. So I think that's where we're gonna go. Um, that's fine. So I've got my square, I kinda knew it. Oh, I need to put my hair up, don't I? Yep. Grab that hair band. So I don't have one. Hang on. Um really excited about having people here in the studio and next month we have two in-person well actually four in-person workshops but two two solid weeks of in-person workshops here at the studio and it's the first time in a really long time so that is going to be very very exciting all right so i'm looking at this but i'm also now i have this thumbnail too so i can use it as well so that is great. In about like so. And I don't want that that angle to end right dead center. I'm gonna extend it, let it be a little more, a little softer. And I've got an idea of so this is just charcoal my this is a um uh, it's a 2b medium charcoal so you know i you guys probably know that i also like blue spruce but this works well too for that initial sketch phase got some some idea some little gaps in the tree line and some 
overlapping shapes. Yeah. And I'm going to come in. And this this just gives it some energy and some texture and some value, all of that. And let's go ahead and add some blue spruce in here. Oh, that's not, that almost feels like it's this one's the right one. So we've now got this mix in here. Doesn't hurt. And I want this tree line to come up a little bit here. In other words, I don't want it to be, so I'm going to bring this up a little bit. So it's just not like sliding off entirely. So this little, uh, this, this arc here gives that line of sight, the, the visual pathway a little more, more strength. I'm thinking about the intervals also in between these little foliage masses so that it's uneven. So I don't, I don't want them all spaced out evenly. So these are clustered together, these are clustered together. This gap is, is bigger than these gaps. So I'm just thinking about that kind of idea. And just to remind everyone, that's pastel matte? This is pastel matte, yeah. And it's like a salmon color? You know, it's a, yeah, it's kind of a salmon color, but you know, it's a new color. Okay, I think and people didn't recognize it. Yeah, so. it's new. And so you have to, yeah, check it out. It's, this is one of the first times I've used it. I like it though. It's, um, you know, it's. I would say it's more salmon than terracotta. Peggy but, says it's um, called sanguine. It's called sanguine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think. Yeah, that's right. Ooh, this is pretty. This is already got some good potential. I like it. Simple, but got a lot of So as this is drying, I'm just going to chat a little bit about year five, which is really exciting. So we have um, a Facebook group dedicated to the monthly lessons, and it's um, ongoing. It doesn't I'm always on. I try to be on there as much as I can. Um, I, try, I pretty much get on there most every day. But it's a really amazing community of artists, and it's really fun to see people are really excited and digging into year five because we have so many um, great sessions. We have a floral still life session. We have cute critters. We've got a nocturne session. We've got, uh, what else, Kevin? Oh, geez. I forget, I forget For, now. Um, we worked so hard on it for so we, long. We have the cute critters. We have the uh, bouquets. Florals. Florals. Still um, still life florals. And oh roses. One that's just roses. Um and we have Marla's landscapes. Marla's so just like landscapes that I like. I my what I would gravitate towards. Uh what else? Urban scapes. We have portraits. Can't, re can't remember them There's all. Portraits too. Went so went overboard. Um right? yeah, so it's it's really been super exciting people are really having a good time with it so yeah we have a bunch of uh the the bunch of other videos the um the session wrap-ups pop up oh we have session wrap-ups yeah so those will be added um to each month as we go along the year 
And uh, what else? What else? There's so it's we're always I'm always trying to come up with new ideas to make it a richer and more in-depth experience and 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 have it be exciting and innovative for people. Um, to, because to, I want that. I want that in my own work, and I want to pass that on. Um, yeah. Oh, and on the Facebook group, I know that not everybody that are not everyone that is a monthly member is really into Facebook. But we we're going to be doing some different things on the Facebook group. Um, so we we are going to feature a student member every month. On, in in the Facebook group and this month it's Sarah Rose our own Sarah Rose she does amazing work she does a lot of um, equine uh, paintings and they are just absolutely stunning she does other stuff too beautiful landscapes and Sarah is just doing so well and selling her stuff and getting a lot of recognition for her beautiful work as well she should so we're going to be doing that. So I'm going to be featuring people that, that are all different sort of stages, not, not just people that, that are necessarily the um, professionals at all or selling. So we're going to be um, really featuring uh, a broad range of people on the Facebook group. So um, I, I, it took me a long while to get to the point where I wanted to do that. But I think that on the whole, I mean, so for some people that maybe isn't, the best, but what I feel like is it's so good to recognize and validate one another and be supportive. And that is one thing I'm so proud about the Facebook group is that it really is that it is a community of pastelists that are um, helping each other out with ideas, comments, if they see something in the pastel world that that is um, is worthy of our, our recognition and time they post it on there and or just a tip or a trick or a materials thing so it's a really great resource it's become that so really cool all right let's see is this dry enough oh i gotta give it a little i gotta dry it a little bit so i'm gonna plug this in up I'm struggling here. And I got it there. What? What? Did I? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's okay. I hardly ever use those puppies, those big ones. So I already like this a lot. So doing that alcohol wash gives me some really fun edges, um, softens some of the edges, gives me a nice variety of edges, um, enhances the values, um, and I'm, I'm and also the texture lets lets me uh, paint as as well as um, do the the strokes with the sticks. Because and so you never think that you could get strokes with pastel but there you go all right so i'm gonna get started um thinking about that sky it's kind of it's overcasty uh, it's kind of bluish but i think i'm going to try to take it in a different direction there as well um these trees there's very you know in the photograph um the the value is pretty it's kind of flat so I do want to bring in a little soft light to them, so a little sense of a direction of light and volume. I, I am going to start with some brown and maybe some this little, <laughs> little piece of Terry Ludwig. Um, so I'll put these on here so you can see what I'm picking. These are the kind of eggplant. This is a dark purple. This is a, a it's kind of a brown, but a, 
Maybe I want a brown that's like that. And then as I think about bringing in a kind of a light source, maybe a, this is a little bit lighter brown. Let's, let's see what we get here. What happens when we pull this in? That that might be enough. That might just be enough of a difference. I want it to be subtle. So I think that's pretty good. I'm avoiding green because green is a and I've I've got the a little bit of that blue spruce in there, so that that's gonna be that's enough green. That's that's green enough for me, honestly. There's a sort of middle section of foliage in here, right, right in here. And that's kind of nice. Now, I am going to bring this other kind of thing in here. I'm going to grab, I'm going to go into my bottom drawer here, and I'm gra grabbing a new pastel that I know that I want. Really quick question. And get it out. Yeah. Um, do you have any more of those posters from the 100 paintings series? Pardon? Do you have any more of those posters from the 100 painting series left? I do have them. But guess what? They're going to be, um, the, I, I, um, saving them for a special. I'm or? saving them for something special. I am. I, I, I could always, um, make some more. Now I see this section in here as being having a little more warmth to it. And this there's this red right in here too. It's gonna go ahead and get that in. And this is almost the color of the paper. Do this. Then I'm going to so this is the distant mountain. And I'm exaggerating the quality of aerial perspective by lighten, lightening it pretty significantly. Um, and that's and that's intentional. I want to push it back. Play with that edge. Now this is something that's a little, it's even lighter, but it's kind of muted. Yeah, I think I want something a little bit darker, more like this. This is kind of gray, so it's that. So I use that and that. So, oops, I have a door slamming. Um, so they're in the same hue family. One's a, I think that's a little bit darker in value, but they they have a 
Um, one's a little more saturated than the other. Bringing in a little bit, a little bit of that soft quality of light. Have you established a main focus yet? Yeah, I have. Another, I have. I just. Secret. I just. I know what it is. I just haven't put it in yet. <laughs> I get to um I get to tease you. And not every painting has to have the strongest of focal points. It's not always the case. But this one's going to have it. You just have to wait for it. I gotta put the sky in next so that So would you say this falls in the inventing color category? Um, I would say this is, falls in the pushing color mm. category. Because I feel like everything that I'm putting in here is there to some degree or another. Um, I'm just exaggerating it. Um, really?
that's too strong. I like that little bit. Right, so now put the sky in because that's going to be pretty telling. I want Okay. All right. So now that I've got that, I can tell that I want that sky to be kind of pinkish with maybe some lavender in there. Yeah. That's definitely cool. Okay. Getting to play on that edge. Don't be afraid of it. You can always redo it. Do that and then I want
And let's see, do I have it already? There's some chatter on the um, chat about sparkly unisons. About what? Sparkly unison pastels. Kind of fun. You just uh, unearthed a couple of those um, Terry Ludwig's, the ones that you had. Yeah. That were, mm -hmm. What do they call that? Ir iridescent? Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, they are. That's fun. Now, I think I was unsure about the light, and I, one thing, I think I want to go ahead and lighten up a couple spots even more on these. So... Just a little more quality of light. Just pushing it a little bit. And we're just making these little adjustments to it. So I really, I love working this way, just using that reference material as, as a starting point, just a guide to really get in there and play with composition, play with color, and finding my way to the finished piece by responding to the piece now, I'm, I'm not really even looking at the, you know, the, long ago I stopped looking at the reference photo. I don't need it anymore. Kevin, let's take a look at this. Do, can we get off the mat? Yeah. Did we um did we break them out the other day? Um, I think I have I have two here. that will work, but the ones that are covered in uh, plastic these will work. But I yeah. thought maybe we had because we were talking about putting yeah, contact we paper were, on. We we're talking about putting some of that. Sarah Rose posted on the Facebook group that she was covering their backing board with um, contact paper, gray contact paper, which is pretty genius and um i'm going i've ordered it right away so i'm going to do the same with the with the sizing mat with the mats cropping mats it's 
genius. Okay, let's see. And I, you know, I need to clean off my hands, but I want to come in here and soften a little bit, not too much, just a tiny bit. Let's see what we got here. I think it's pretty cool. And let's, yeah, see, it'd be nice to have these be clean. It really would. Um, but there's the photo, and I think the painting's a lot better. <laughs> and that's the idea. I want it to be a lot better. And I've got two other thumbnails to play with and could really easily play with those. These are, these are a little, the only thing I would say about these, these are a little evenly spaced and maybe it would be good to, I could, I could get, I could play with that a little bit. That would be my criticism of the painting. It's a little bit, maybe I'll just eliminate that one altogether. That'll probably work. Or make it small like that. That'll work too. Yeah, that's much better already, right? So. Yeah, cool. So again, just, you know, not not about what is good you know is what's here in front of me it's what's going to make the better painting okay i think that's it for today's lesson really appreciate you joining me and uh, make sure you head over to the website, the sale's on until uh, September 4th. We've extended it, hoping that a few more people can get in on the fun. All right, any, any, do you have any questions before we go for the day? Uh, yeah, um, so um, can you talk a little bit more about the paper? It's um, multimedia paper, it's, uh, can you? That I used for the abstract? Uh, no, for the pastel mat. Oh, pastel mat. Pastel mat is a great multimedia paper. You can paint on it. You can, it's a, uh, it's actually made of like, um, I think it's sort of like a um, synthetic or cork kind of material that they make it from, if I'm not mistaken. And it's tough. And you can just, you can do a lot of different stuff with it. Um, you can paint on it. You can do ink. You can, um, um, I, I I put it I definitely put it put it through its paces. I mean, you can use uh, uh, wet media on it, all kinds of stuff. So it, I love it. And I for pastel, the uh, marks go down and kind of grab on in a pretty particular manner that's kind of unique to this paper that I just really really enjoy. So um, I use it. Um, I'm not going to say exclusively um, when I'm doing pastel, but you know, I would say a good 80, 85, 90% of what I do in pastel, I do on pastel mat. So yeah, love it, love it. But there are, I, you know, for any pastelist, you have to find the materials that really help, that, that, you, that you enjoy using, that, that give you that tactile experience that, that is so unique to doing pastel and also the the paper surface that is going to help you further your own unique style and mark making vocabulary 
And I think that that's really important. So it's important to really try out and ex experiment with um, as many of the different types of paper as you can. Um, and that sometimes that's hard because when, when you're first starting out with the paper, you might go, Ugh, what's this? I am not, it doesn't feel familiar. Um, but what I try to do is I'll, I'll get some paper, I'll give it a try. If it, if it, it doesn't kind of suit me right away, I usually just try to give it another shot. I try not to make too much of a snap judgment about um, materials um, because you never know where, where, when you're at different points in your journey, it might be just the thing that helps you um, take off with something. So, yeah, just be open. All right, guys, I um, hope you enjoyed today's lesson, and we'll see you really soon. Okay, bye.